Hello, this is Breakfast with Naga Manchette in Charlie State. Good morning to you. Oh, coming up on the programme, the huge puff sleeves, a 25-foot train. That's what made Princess Diana's wedding dress one of the most recognisable of all time. We're going to be at Kensington Palace this morning where it's going on display. Yarn bombing. And out come the bride and groom. Probably the most famous wedding dress in the world. The gown worn by Princess Diana goes on display for the first time in 25 years. Good morning from the roof. UV levels today are going to be high or very high at my teens or just into the low 20s. Now again, Charlie. Carol, thanks very much. It does look lovely looking over the skyline. Thanks, Carol. Pleasure. Now, it's one of the most recognisable items of clothing pretty much in history. And now, Princess Diana's wedding dress is going back on public display for the first time in 25 years. Cooler tomorrow, but there's all seen temperatures in the high teens or just into the low 20s. Now, again, Charlie. Carol, thanks very much. It does look lovely looking over the skyline. Thanks, Carol. Pleasure. Now, it's one of the most recognisable items of clothing pretty much in history. And now, Princess Diana's wedding dress is going back on public display for the first time in 25 years. Now, this gown forms part of a new exhibition at Kensington Palace, from where our correspondent Ellie Price joins us. Um, Ellie, let's, let's see. It's going to be something that really brings back many, many memories for lots and lots of people, because that dress, it certainly did have the wow factor then. It certainly had the wow factor then, it actually still has the wow factor now. And of course, there's a lot of anticipation here at Kensington Palace because we're in the presence of royalty, or at least the dresses that they wore. And this one, incidentally, is one that Princess Margaret wore in the late 1960s. But there are dresses here from the Queen Mother. And yes, of course, that big dress that Diana wore on her big day almost four decades ago. It was the wedding, the dress. Even the Archbishop of Canterbury described the day as the stuff of fairy tales. 750 million people tuned in worldwide to watch. 600,000 people tried to see for themselves along the route from St Paul's to Buckingham Palace. And out come the bride and groom. Diana, the dress, the wedding, it marked the moment, a huge shift in the relationship between public and press and the royal family. It was the beginning of Diamania, this huge obsession with this young 20-year-old girl, this absolute obsession with her that was never going to wane. The wedding took place on a warm Wednesday in late July, almost 40 years ago. It was a bank holiday, and for those who didn't line the streets of London, it was essential viewing on the telly. What were you doing that day? Um, I got dressed up in my mum's wedding dress um, to watch the royal wedding. And how old were you? I was about six. She got out of the car and um, her dress, I think it was made by the Emmanuels, and um, she got out and it was massive, a long train. Uh, it was very creased and they were all fussing around her, all like trying to straighten it out. <laughs> I, I just think everybody was so pleased to see them together and married. Um, it was just essential viewing. No, nobody I knew didn't watch it. I was 17. <laughs> did it feel like a fairy tale? It did. Yeah, every girl's dream. The dress is on display for the first time in 25 years at Kensington Palace. All 25 feet of train, 10,000 mother of pearl sequins, and lots and lots of taffeta ruffles. Along with the other items in the collection, including this life-size test garment of the coronation gown of Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, from 1937, it's a challenge to keep these dresses in their full royal glory. The ones that are in store, we monitor the environment that they're in. We look at things like relative humidity, the temperature, uh, pests is also a very big problem. Everything is packed in acid-free boxes and tissue paper and then obviously things that are on display, there's slightly different criteria so we look at light levels but we also do a little bit of hands-on conservation work. The dress has been loaned to the exhibition by her sons the princes. It goes on display just a few weeks before what would have been Diana's 60th birthday. A bittersweet reminder that life is rarely as simple as happily ever after. 
that's what everybody's been waiting for. And that's the thing with Charles and Diana's wedding. It was the fairy tale. It was the huge romance. The world fell in love with it. But under it all, it was a very different story. And when Diana spoke out and chose to shatter the fairy tale, it was almost too much for the national obsession to bear. Like I say, there were five garments here, not just that one from Diana, but they are all beautiful. And joining me now is Claudia Williams, who's the curator here at Kensington Palace. I feel like I recognise this one, but I don't, do I? You probably don't recognise this particular dress because it was worn at a private event. It's never been seen in public before, but it is very recognisably one of Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother's dresses. It was designed for her by Norman Hartnell, who is perhaps the most important uh, designer of the 20th century. Um, and, and he really, I think, set the, the stage for, or set the standard for royal dressing um, from the beginning of the 20th century and, and still today. And that's what this exhibition is about, isn't it, really? It's about British fashion designers and, and the impact that the, royal, the royals have had on, on British fashion and therefore worldwide fashion. Yeah, exactly. And um, what we wanted to do here was really to highlight the relationships between designer and client. Look at the sort of unique attributes, the style that each of them brought to those relationships and the way in which those collaborations have really come to define British royal image making today. And go on then, we have to talk about the biggie here, the bi literally the biggie with the 25 foot train, of course, which is Diana's dress. Now, yeah. she obviously didn't design the dress, but she had, it sort of smacks of Diana. It's got her name all over it, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's completely iconic. The silhouette is, of course, totally iconic. Seen the world over, I think 750 million people sort of tuned in to see her become a princess, join the royal family in this dress. It was designed for her by the Emmanuels, and I think, of course, she was very involved in the process of its creation, but really her sort of very innovative move was to choose this sort of young, fresh, quite modern uh, design house to create the dress for her, which was a turning point. British royal brides had always been very classic and traditional in their choices, um, and this was a very kind of bold move. The first time a royal bride had really been very fashion forward. Lovely, and of course set the tone very much for 1980s fashion. Well, there are around 800 people coming today alone, and this exhibition will run till the end of January. And of course, that will be the start of the show. Ellie, thanks so much. Time now to get the news, travel, and the weather where you are.